My name is Tony Stark. I build cool things. I'm a brilliant engineer. So why can't I sleep at night? At the end of all this, after all the hard work, I have to remind myself that I am Iron Man. Welcome back everybody to the Iron Man universe. This time around, Marvel brings us Iron Man 3. Robert Downey Jr. plays the role of Tony Stark. He goes through a transformation. He tells you about a series of events that lead to present day. His house gets blown up, everybody's seen that on the trailer, and guess what? His arch nemesis is introduced in the form of Sir Ben Kingsley, the Mandarin. That guy was pretty scary. He's fucking scary. So what do you think happens? Tony is stripped of all of his powers, most of his suits are blown up, and guess what? He now has to face off against the Mandarin only using his mind. So what do you think this movie is going to be like? We're about to find out. We're going to start the pros at probably the most logical place uh, we can. With Gwyneth Paltrow's character, Pepper Potts. What? Yeah, hell no. Nah, we're just fucking with you. Of course we're going to start with Robert Downey Jr. I don't think anybody in this world could play a better Tony Stark. So one of the first questions I had was, how are they going to make Iron Man 3 better than Iron Man 2? They took away all of Tony's toys and his powers that, that he had with, uh, with the Iron Man suit. Tony publicly threatens the Mandarin and as a result has his house blown up. <sighs> so what happens after the house gets blown up is, don't ask, but he gets flown to Tennessee. <laughs> the most logical place to be flown after uh, your house blows up. He doesn't have his house, his Iron Man suit because it's all powered down. And he doesn't have Jarvis, which usually is his AI that helps him out. So now he's got to figure out how he's going to get back into the game and get revenge for all the bad things that the Mandarin has done to him. Because Tony Stark had all of these crazy epic gadgets, he was perceived as untouchable. There was nobody, uh, you know, except for Thor maybe, that could come out and really mess with him. Once his power is taken away, he's brought back to that cave in Afghanistan that we were brought to in the first movie. And he really has to work his way back up the ladder to make sure that he can, you know, be useful again. What this does for character development is it makes Tony grow up. I'm going to talk about two of the supporting actors here. Sir Ben Kingsley, who's phenomenal as the Mandarin. Uh, he's almost as phenomenal as our Ben from The Daily Struggle, but we're not going to get into that one. We can't really talk about the reason why Sir Ben Kingsley's performance was awesome, but I'm going to tell you this, it is worth watching the movie for. Don Cheadle also returns in this movie as War Machine and then for some odd reason gets renamed to the uh, Iron Patriot. Right there, right there, Iron Patriot. And it's just a circle. I mean, it's a good circle. One of the things I loved about this movie is the interaction between Tony Stark and James Rhodes. I really enjoyed the little snappy kind of comebacks that they had for each other and you could really tell that they knew each other for quite a while and it wasn't just like this forced relationship. Yeah, one of the other things I personally liked was the fact that uh, there was a, a very big contrast between their backgrounds and that was displayed when uh, there was a scene where Don Cheadle and Robert Downey Jr. are, are going to go save the president or something like that. Yeah. And you can literally see the difference between their backgrounds. You know, you have James Rhodes and his kind of military background and then you have Tony Stark's carefree, you know, non-military background as well. One of the things we're going to touch on also is the action and the CGI. They were pretty much just fucking epic. It was so much fun to watch all the actions and the effects and all the stuff. Shit was blowing up and like there was like a million Iron Men at one point. It was fucking cool. Yeah, you'd almost think that Michael Bay directed it. Realistically, we couldn't start the pros with Gwyneth Paltrow's character because she was just a supporting actress. However, we could definitely start the cons with her. The reason why Gwyneth Paltrow's character is uh, in the cons section on the pros is, honest to goodness, she overstayed her welcome. Tony! Why? Why, Tony? No, Tony! It felt like the writers just had to add more lines in for her, which was kind of irritating. She didn't need to have those lines. They even at one point gave her this like action sequence, which made no fucking sense because Gwyneth Paltrow was a fucking secretary two movies ago. Somebody there in Hollywood, if you're listening to this, the side characters don't need to have their own little storylines. Nobody gives a shit about Gwyneth Paltrow's character. 
grab stuff for Tony Stark and look pretty. Otherwise, just call the movie Pepper Potts 3. Now, one of the things we're going to gripe about is the ending of this movie. I'm not going to give too much away, obviously, but it, it basically falls under the happy ending category. Just because a movie ends does not mean it has to have a quote-unquote happy ending. In order to have a really satisfying ending, you really just need to answer the questions that you've presented in your story. That's really all you have to do. You don't have to make it so cookie-cutter. It makes it kind of boring and predictable. One of the things I'm going to talk about is actually featured in the trailer. There's a scene where Tony's house is about to get blown up by all these helicopters, and you know Ben Kingsley is like, You'll never see me coming. And then he blows up the house, and so it's great, right? Um, now here's, here's the part that kind of throws me off a little bit. You ready for this? You have the Mandarin sending helicopters, which by the way are not attack helicopters, they're just news choppers, retrofitted with rockets, to go blow up Tony Stark's house. On the flip side of things, you have Tony Stark, the master of all gadgets and information technology. When the government wants technology, they go to him for that. His house is secured by Jarvis. You can't even go into his basement without entering a code. Okay, there's this giant missile heading towards Tony's house. Not a single person notices it except for what? One of some girl that he hooked up with like 15 years ago? And guess where she notices it on? CNN. On CNN! What the fuck? I absolutely understand that they had to take away his power. However, you don't take away his power by making him look like a complete nitwit. Lastly, we're gonna bitch about Guy Pierce's character, Aldrich Killian. It was kind of a cool name. I'll give you that. Everything else, however, about it was a little weird. Okay, so at the beginning of the movie, Tony Stark recollects what happened like 13, 14 years ago when he first met Guy Pierce. Okay? And when they portray his character, and you can actually get a real quick snippet in the trailer of what this guy looks like, he kind of looks like a nerdy Val Kilmer, which I didn't really understand. In present day, he's shown as, you know, this kind of slick bag GQ Dapper Don type of a character. And obviously he's one of the bad guys. But the problem with it is that he's just unbelievable. Like, I really couldn't take him seriously. See, this is one of those things that me and Lou don't see eye to eye on. I'm a big fan of Guy Pearce. His performance made him seem sort of collected, but crazy in a way. And I, I really enjoy that in, in a character. What are you doing? I just got it. What'd you get? The great. Every one of the cast members for this movie was had something special about them. Robert Downey Jr. He's a junior. Sir Ben Kingsley. He's a sir. Don Cheeto. He's a Don. He's a Don. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow. You <laughs> not I mean, I wouldn't kick her out of bed. Yeah. And Guy Pearce. I wouldn't kick him out of bed either. When you have a roster of talented actors, more than likely you're going to have a phenomenal movie. Yep. It's because of that reason that I'm going to have to give this movie a 5 out of 6. 5. That's 5 out of 6. Ah! Do you know why I'm really excited right now? Why are you really excited right now? Because it's May, dude. All the good movies are going to start coming out starting May. And, good. of course, you know, obviously we just reviewed Iron Man 3. Guess what we're watching next week? What are we watching next week? What are we watching next week? The Great Gatsby with Leo DiCaprio. I know he's one of your favorites. Yes, he is. Absolutely. I'm not really a big fan of Tobey Maguire because he's going to be in that movie, but whatever. At I'm least, willing to watch it. At least he's not going to be Spider-Man. Yeah, at least he's not going to be this web-slinging Spider-Man. Anyways, my name's Lugo. This is my brother Ruman, a.k.a. Thor. Now you're just going to piss people off. If you want to check out some of our other videos, just click on the links below. Yeah!